Welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Today we're in with the ram lambs. We're going to do some DNA testing. This morning I decided to let the ewes and lambs out for their time. So this will be Linus's very first time being outdoors. There's little Linus right there. See, running in the grass. Well, little Linus is out there running in the grass. Here's Linus up at the swing. Hi, what do you think about being outdoors? Is it exciting? Hi, Thelma. Hi. It's a lot of half of these guys, it's their first time outside. They would have been the straggler group, and the other half were the younger ones that were born in March. And here comes Buddy. One of the lambs has noticed it. <laughs> That's Gary. Is that a cat coming your way? Not scary for the older ones. We've got a U by the scrub brush right now. They love to go on that. Gives them a nice back rub. It's an old city street sweeper. I used brush off one of the ones that go around the cities and uh, sweep the streets and sidewalks and stuff. So when I say we're DNA testing, what I mean is that we are checking for scrapie resistance. Now I do have a video um, talking about scrapie resistance in layman's terms. I can put a link down in the description. 
Um, and we will discuss Scrapey a little bit as we go along here. So right now we're just setting up the catch area as usual. We have a table here. This is the clamp we got from the United States. These are the people who do the DNA testing. They're located in Greeley, Colorado. They're called Gene Check. Why are you testing in the States, honey? Because they are way better at it than, the than, than the Canadians. Whoa! See, see, you the, the Canadians want to do a blood test, which means bringing in a veterinarian and the vet drawing blood from the jugular and putting it in a vial and sending it off. Whereas this company in Colorado, you use a tag like this, and I will write down the lamb's farm tag number on here. Then I'll write it on the piece of paper, and I will check off what I wanna test for. So I'm just testing for codon 171, which is basically going to tell me if it is scrapey resistant. Right now we're going to get the rams over here and then I will explain what we're looking for in a little more detail. We're not doing the two Texel crosses because they're for sale. And we're only doing purebreds, except for Lambert here. We're gonna do Lambert too because he has the potential of going to the United States and they require scrapey testing. Okay, so I'm gonna go step by step. I'm just gonna do the first one and then you're gonna know that we're gonna do the same thing to all of them. So we've got them in a headlock here. Now Arnie's gonna tell me what, oh, I guess I'll just scan him to get his tag number. It's a lot quicker. Hi, do you like that? You put it beside there. Okay, so the first wow. ram was BL472. So I'm gonna get a tag wow. and write wow. BL472 on it. Arnie's gonna lock that into this gun here. Wow. And I'm gonna write it on the sheet so that's wow. gonna go to the company. And then we get a little tiny thing, which is the thing that you are really afraid are going to get lost. We got him in the headlock. I read him to find out what his number is with my reader, and it tells me he's BL571. So I put BL571 on the record sheet for the company, and I get a new tag for this guy. Okay, so Arnie loops that ah. little tag in in there there it's focused now ah. and then there's this little green thing it's got a sharp edge on it ah. and it clamps onto this thing here and there's a little container at the back ah. that looks like see that clear container can you point to it ah. that the little ear a little patch of ear ah. skin pops into that container when he clamps them Okay, show them how you do it. Oh, and guess what's in the background? It's thunder. So he's not tagging them per se, but it's like tagging. So he just clamped them, and in there you can't even see it, can you? I don't even think you can see the tag, it's right so there, small. There's a green thing in there. The green thing. I can't focus on it, wait a minute. There, it's in that little thing there, that little skin tag and he's done, and that gets sent away for DNA testing. Uh, Hi, buddy. Again? Uh, 
again, it's just like getting your ear pierced. It's just a little clamp, and he's all done. Can you show him the hole in here? Just a little clamp. Okay, so we're going to videotape this one because this is L Lambert. He could be going to the States. He's a grade, but we're going to do him anyway. He's BL548. And we're going to just give him his little DNA testing. If you put a QQ. Just as proof. We got it on camera. We did it correctly. And we wrote his number down here. And we got it on the form. He must have been one that, uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Now, I haven't been doing that, but I thought he didn't look the same as the others. He must be one, and let's put a green dot on him. He must be one that was going to go on the trailer. Is that, is that a dot or a smear? This is too cold. That's okay. So I'm now I'm gonna check, read what I. Registered Quincy single. So if we were to do this with a vet, this would be way more expensive and way more time consuming. As you can see, just uh, doing a little tag in the ear is quite a quick procedure. And we're, oh, nice. we're searching for a scrapey resistant sheep. Okay, and we caught a few that were on the, from the young pen that we thought were all right. This little ram is from Felon and he's a triplet. So, if there's a nice triplet, we always like to keep them, and I told Arnie to mark them so he wouldn't mix them up, and he got a little carried away. So, we did 19 lucky boys in this barn. We tried to take a few extra from Snappy and older rams that um, aren't here any longer or won't be here for much longer. And Snappy was a QQ, which means he had no scrapey resistance. So, um, you don't want scrapey. I mean, it's a disease that's very uncommon. But when it comes in your flock, they'll actually call your whole flock for it. It's the one that caused mad cow disease. People can get it. Other animals can get it. Um, so it is a bad disease. Some countries are scrapey resistant. The, the government has made sure that all farmers test for scrapey resistance and now they don't have it. So they've eradicated it in their countries. I believe the UK is one of those countries. Canada has no such programs whatsoever. It's all voluntary. So um, because we love our sheep so much, <laughs> We don't want there to be an outbreak in Canada and for the government to come and call all our, all our sheep. And in order for them not to get culled, they have to be at least a QR. So um, QR is still considered resistant to pretty well all strains of scrapey. RR is perfectly resistant, but QR is still acceptable in all countries, even shipping across borders. So that's what we're looking for. Snappy turned out to be a QQ, but we used them 
a lot on grades and we used them on sheep that we thought were RR or we knew were RR. So if you put a QQ on an RR, you have a 50% chance of getting another QR. So with the scrape, so with the snappy lambs, what we're hoping for is that mom passed on an R gene and they'll get the one of the Q genes from Snappy to create a scrapey resistant sheep. And I would prefer to use RR rams because it increases the likelihood of producing R, more RR use. But for a fantastic ram, QR is acceptable because like I say, he is still scrapey resistant. So Gladiator is an example of a ram that you'd be foolish to call, in my, in my opinion, for being QR because he is fabulous in every other way. So you have to look at everything. We even kept Snappy here as a QQ. He's the only QQ we've ever had. We used him mainly on commercial sheep but he was fabulous. Um, so in Canada, the likelihood of scrapey passing on flock to flock is small too, because they also have to be in proximity of another farm that got scrapey. And we aren't close to any other farms <laughs> at all. There are no sheep farms around here. So we're safe either way, but we just wanna be doubly safe. And if we want to export to the United States, the rams have to be QR, U's have to be RR. And we almost forgot that we had to do Cracker, and he was in the other barn. Where is he? There he is. Hi, Cracker. He's friendly. Katie, come here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is read his tag. Hi, Cracker. Don't worry, it's not torture. Hi, buddy. So he's from Gaston. I always wondered who he was from. Gaston. He's from our Quebec Gram. BL440. There he is. Here's the little green thing. I'll put it in. Yeah, you put it in. Do the tip of the ear. We just clip the tip of his ear. And there we go. Gaston, his dad, is an RR ram. So we know for a fact that he can not be worse than a QR ram. So these are all the DNA tags that we did. I just gotta finish up my paperwork, get them put in an envelope. It actually gets mailed to the United States. And what will happen is they'll test those samples and they'll send me both a written and a computerized version of the results. And when those comes, come back, I'll be sure to go over them with you and show you how the rams did. We're hoping for QRs and RRs. Um, we had a few that were from Snappy, so there's a possibility of some QQs in there, but we're hoping no QQs. 
And yeah, that's it for how we DNA test. It's pretty simple. So it was another busy day at the farm, but we got a lot done again. Tomorrow we plan on vaccinating all the lambs, so I hope you'll join us for that. Please remember to give us a like if you enjoyed your video today and tell other people about us and share the news because we would love to have more viewers. Anyway, um, I do hope you join us tomorrow. And until then, bye for now. Oh, and for all of you fathers out there, I hope you all had a happy Father's Day. Bye for now.